So today is August 1st 2011 a couple of days ago in this newspaper it's called 20 minutes it was in the newspaper that a um, a uh, genetic analysis uh, company analysis company sorry which is called iGenia in Zurich they had the uh, the uh, Swiss um, genetic uh, pool run through their systems and compare it with the pharaohs and uh, it came out that each second Swiss has a uh, pharaonic genetics so you know this is what I've been saying for a very long time and in my film, The Pharaoh Show, uh, these people, they are not Europeans. They, may, they might look like Europeans, but they certainly don't behave like Europeans. And um, I already knew for a very long time that the, um, their, uh, um, their uh, skull form, the form of their skulls, is um, very pharaonic it's called uh, dolicocephalic and there's a very high concentration of this in uh, all over switzerland and the um, um, for the rest of europe central europe there's a a, a brachycephalic uh, skull form which is more round and the swiss definitely have the uh, the long shaped headed um, pharaonic uh, skulls they do and in every war they were not there not in the first world war not in the second world war which they financed through the banking system uh, not in the 30 year war from 1618 to 1648 which was the worst of all european war wars all all towns disappeared of the face of the earth uh, and these Swiss mercenaries, which are still, you know, what's left of them, you know, uh, in the uh, defending, like the Vatican, the um, the Vatican's guard, they're all Swiss, yeah. and they kill millions of Germans, and in Alsace, in uh, France, and in uh, they, there, they kill 95% of the population. And in the south of Germany, it was the same thing. So the Swiss Germans, they massively settled down in the south of Germany, where the Nazis started off their whole thing, you know, in Munich and in Nuremberg. And in, um, they settled down in Elsass and, all, and elsewhere, you know, taking over infiltrating and taking over the, uh, the, the the construction of power in an entire country and um, yeah there was the uh, the Swiss mercenaries and uh, today is August 1st and this is their national holiday and we I already told you that uh, two and a half months later after um, May 18th um, 1291 when Ecken fell they um they founded switzerland on august 1st and ever since they um they kept this date as a uh, a national holiday uh for later on i'm going to uh film the um which I already did in the german and the french version i'm going to film the uh the stakes where they uh symbolically um are still celebrating the murder on the europeans and their children and they still do it on today's day until today's day of course it was also these uh, swiss templars that murdered the jewish population in europe in the holocaust and um yeah because they had too many bank accounts you know on these uh, the swiss bankster uh, templar bankings you know yeah so um and of course the swiss templars and the swiss mercenaries they always had to come back 
uh, you know, when the uh, when the harvest started, roughly the harvest started, and that was uh, roughly around uh, August first every year, and it lasted for about two months. And um, there weren't any tractors in these days or any uh, mechanical equipment. So um, everybody had to uh, help out and everybody was a farmer in these days. So these Swiss mercenaries, they came back on horseback and they stole a lot of horses in Germany and in France. Yeah, we all heard it. That's a national holiday. So that's fireworks, firecrackers. We're going to see some more of it later on. That's like... Um, Le 14 juillet in France or uh, July 4th in America. Well, they've got August 1st, and which is based on an entirely different, uh, well, maybe not even. Uh, probably the same reasons. Freemasons, you know, created or founded a country like uh, after the revolution in France or in, in the Americas, yeah. And uh, well, okay, so that was uh, August 1st, and then they came back, these Swiss mercenaries loaded with, uh, with looting goods, and they shot in the air with a, a musket, like you know, like kadoom, you know. And everybody came down rushing from the mountains and the fields where they were working and the forests, and they celebrated the murder of the Europeans and their children, which they do until today, which we will see later on. Yeah, so actually it was me who gave the, uh, the information about the uh, pharaonic concentration in Switzerland to these DNA testers in uh, Zurich. They, so they ran it through and 50% uh, of the Swiss Germans, they are of pure pharaonic blood. That explains is they're sucking out the US economy and they're sucking out the German economy and uh, they are the reason for the um, the economic collapse in Greece and in Spain because they're attracting very rich people all over the world from all over the world who are not going to with big factories and all that and they're not going to pay any more taxes in their own countries and taxes have to be paid and it's all going to be on the backs of poor people making poor people poorer and rich richer and this is what these um, uh, these uh, Swiss criminals are doing. They are not Europeans. I proved it historically in the Pharaoh show, and I proved it, and it's been proven a couple of days ago genetically. The Swiss are no Europeans. They are full blood, full blood Pharaohs. This is the basis, the Al Qaeda of the Pharaohs, with which they took over the whole world and uh, yeah, well the Templars founded Switzerland which I proved historically and uh, out of the Templars came the um, the Freemasons and uh, the Templars were the first banks in Europe and of course they uh, with the, uh, the the Templars treasure uh, the Swiss banks were founded yeah so and um, which we're going to see later on when they're going to uh, to burn the stakes, you know, where they are also uh, symbolically uh, celebrating the murdering of um, of the good women of Europe who didn't want to uh, collaborate against their man and stab them in their backs by collaborating with the witches of Isis, the sisters of Isis. So um, it was the witches who burned the good women, and this is what they still celebrate it here, which I'm going to show later on. At 9.30 this evening they're going to do it, I'm going, well we're going then and film a little bit earlier. And actually it was also a Swiss idea about burning the women in all over Europe, which the Swiss mercenaries uh, did. And it was a Swiss idea, there were two Swiss, one was called Heinrich Kramer, and the other one was called Jakob Sprenger. And they wrote the witch's hammer in Latin, uh, the Maleus Maleficarum. And there was the handbook, how to torture women, how to burn them at the stakes, how to tie them up and, uh, and the rest. This country is evil. I mean, uh, we should send the SAS and the SEALs and the Rangers and the Marines, we should send them here instead of Libya. 
Uh, another thing, I uh, maybe you saw my um, contribution like uh, the uh, at the Bilderberg conference. And uh, what does the name Bilderberg mean? Apparently, it's from a hotel in Holland. So there's there's a country where there are no bergs, which means mountains in the Germanic languages, like German. So the name Berg is not. It can't be touched because it's all flat. It's all flat and now like a fucking pancake it is, the whole country. It's beneath the sea level actually, half of it. And uh, so then the name Bilder. The name Bilder is German and it means a, um, a photograph or a, uh, a painting. So what is this Bilderberg? So it means a mountains of paintings or mountains of photographs. In Auschwitz, I talked to a, uh, a, a former SS in Elsass and he told me he was, uh, that was in 2003, the bloke was 84 years and he got severely wounded on the East Front fighting the Russians. And um, so he couldn't fight anymore. Uh, he had uh, grenade, split, grenade splitters all over his body and all things like that. So they um, they put him in Auschwitz doing uh, like doing guard like with the SS. He was a member already a member of the SS actually. He told me actually that uh, he knew that his uh, ancestors came 350 years ago from Switzerland and actually in this part of France they speak like Swiss German as in um, as in Switzerland they do you know the first language is Swiss German and not even French the Alsatians they don't like the French and they don't like the German either because they're bloody Swiss and this bloke told me that they had uh, the guys who had to sort out all the all the materials we were left over of all the people they murdered um, like they had mountains of glasses they had mountains of hair, they had mountains of teeth, and they had mountains of shoes, you know. And the guys who, and then they also had mountains of photographs of all the lives taken away, of all the, of a, as a memory of, of, uh, of what, what was left of Europe. So mountains of pictures, and this, if you translate this in German, you get the name Bilderberger. So the name Bilderberger is symbolically a name and very cynically for the um, destruction of Europe and as a memory a very cynical memory of what Europe used to be like when it was still sort of free before the New World Order which started off actually in 1945 it really started off you know there's one empire fighting a second empire one Reich Germany fights the second Reich Russia and the third Reich you know, the enemy within, the third party, takes it all. The land, the power, the cattle, and this is how they do it. It's quite simple, actually. And, um, yeah, so they call them already there. You know, the people didn't have a name anymore. They were all just skeletons. And they, um, they had a number, but who, who knows a number, you know, you know like with, with, with five or six numbers on it. Who knows the number or more? Uh, so they called them, uh, well, they gave them a name very cynically. They, they said, well, these guys were sorting out all these mountains and, and putting all the gear of all these dead people, you know, mountains of glasses and mountains of hair and mountains of shoes. We call them the, the, uh, the, the uh, picture mountains, the Bilder, Burger, Bilder, picture, and Berg is a mountain. And this Prince Bernard, who was a Tsar, you know, a, a, a pharaonic king, he was a, um, he came from the, uh, nobi the, the uh, German nobility. And as we know, the Queen of, uh, of Holland, his daughter, uh, attends every Bilderberg conference. And she was there at the St. Moritz conference as well. You know, the apple doesn't fall far away from the tree, you see. So, um, 